Welcome back to the foundry. Well, spring is upon us, and my little yard here is out of control. In fact, it's been plaguing the... Ooh, watch out for road apples. It's been plaguing the community now for a number of days, and the reason for this vegetation abomination is right there. You see, last year, after having been plagued with multiple mechanical issues, my lawnmower finally broke down for good, triggering a flare-up in my Tourette's, at which point I stabbed it with the forklift and dumped it in the bushes. They say the definition of insanity is when you keep doing the same thing, hoping for a different outcome. So today we're about to put that definition to the test. I suppose insanity can manifest itself in a variety of ways. Uh, the type I personally endorse is basically amounts to receiving free derelict lawnmowers in hopes that I can fix them and make them reliable. And one might assume this is because of uh, an abundance of frugality, and that's why I won't just simply go buy a new lawnmower. Partially true, yes. But while it's not incorrect, it is incomplete. In fact, uh, after last year's episode, I was determined to go just buy a brand new lawnmower, one that I can take care of, maintain, and be done with it. However, uh, the size of my yard doesn't really justify a large lawnmower, uh, really not even one this size. But uh, I have found that uh, a rider is quite a bit faster than using a push mower. And when I go to mow the yard, I have a finite amount of time to complete that task. But what ends up happening is to do a 15 minute mowing job, I have to designate two hours of mechanic work on whatever particular lawnmower I happen to be using that day. So I went down to buy a brand new lawnmower. I wanted the smallest riding mower I could get. Single blade, rear engine, just a compact little unit, inexpensive, and I found a uh, Cub Cadet that, that fit the bill. It was all plastic. I, I would be surprised if it lasted more than three seasons, so I'm thinking this thing's gonna be pretty cheap, and I'm easy on equipment, I can make it last, you know. Then I saw the price tag. After tax, I was gonna be in at over $2,000. So I promptly dismissed that venture as foolhardy, and that's when I came across this jewel that uh, a family member had given to me. Um, much like my old mower, it broke down and was abandoned in the yard for approximately two years. So it's anyone's guess what we're going to find, but we're going to go over this thing. And I can already tell it's in better shape than mine was. So I've got high hopes that we can repair this thing and I can take care of that disaster of a yard. All right, let's see what we're working with here. I actually haven't even looked this thing over yet. Uh, this is the first time I've seen it. Uh, so this is a Craftsman DLS 3500 Limited Edition VTS. I don't know what any of that means, uh, but I do know it has a Precision Plus cutting system, uh, whatever that is. Um, and it is a 46 inch deck, hydrostatic. So the story I got behind it was uh, it had spent most of its life in storage. So uh, about two years ago, before that mowing season, it received a new carburetor. Oh, it's a uh, 20 horse Intech. Oh, this isn't just an Intech. This is an Intech Plus. So, you know, whatever that means. But it received a new carburetor two years ago. That all looks looks good hopefully I can just clean that and salvage it and uh, what oh and a new battery of course uh, it's a lead acid battery lawnmower batteries you're good to get three years out of them and that's having not abandoned them to the elements to survive on their own for two years so I'll put a charger on that and we'll see if we can uh, squeeze some more life out of it but uh, I'm gonna have to get this to where I can work on it a forklift is an excellent lift table doesn't work well with lawnmowers if you have to deal with the deck. Eh, 
Yeah, it looks like it took a hit in the front here, but I think I can fix that pretty easy. Now, in terms of the actual failure, the story I got was uh, something to do with this deck. And uh, I, don't, I don't know what's going on here. I have to fix that. Um, basically, I think it was operator error. They were mowing with the deck too far to the ground through some really, really uh, thick grass. Let's get it down to where we can, maybe we can see what's going on. Oh, yeah, here's, here's the issue. Uh, so the story I got is that it was under too much of a load, something cratered in the deck, stalled it out, and they just left it. And what we have here is, appears to be, I'm not sure if this is a tensioner or, a, or an idler pulley, or how it's attached to the deck, but that, that is obviously damaged. So I think what I'll do before we dig into the actual failure, uh, I just want to make sure this thing actually runs. I'm going to get the battery charged up. We're going to see if we can get the engine running. And if all that checks out, then we can commence on to uh, the critical error there. Well, the battery actually took a charge. Uh, it wasn't totally dead. It still showed six volts. So that was very surprising. Haven't load tested it yet. That'll really tell us the story. But I was just about to check fluids. We got plenty of oil and it appears to be clean. Yeah, I'd say it needs an air filter. So I'll put that on the list, but for now, it'll suit us just fine. The tank is bone dry. There's all sorts of crap in there. Looks like mouse droppings, a gasket. I don't know what that other thing is. Did it come out of the, yeah. The lid, the uh, cap, the gasket is deteriorated. Give it the old smell test. Hi, you know, surprisingly, it doesn't smell that rank. I'm gonna try to just kind of pull these pieces out here one at a time with this retrieval tool. It appears to be the remnants of what used to be the vent portion of this gas cap has deteriorated and left the chaff and entered the fuel tank. This is like that game where you, at the uh, bowling alley in the arcade there where you try to get the stuffed animals and... You think those buckets are gonna hold? Oh, oh we're about to find out. We're going to put it to the test. All right, clutch is in. Let's choke it. So if that carburetor was as dry as the fuel tank was, it's probably going to take a second to get fuel to it. Ooh, promise. Well, can't believe the battery survived. That's just amazing. Um, so yeah, it popped once and I got excited prematurely. Pretty disgusting. Well, it's not heavily worn, but it does look like it's been run on choke a bunch or something. It's all suited up. So the experts will tell you that there's no way to revive a fouled spark plug. I don't subscribe to that. Now, granted, wire brushing or sandblasting only gets the surface clean. It leaves the contaminants in the pores of the metal. So that's why I use a torch. And an oxyacetylene rig is a little faster than this. I just didn't feel like dragging it out. So I'm using this little one, but basically what you want to do is apply heat to it and you'll notice that the carbon deposits will begin burning off of it. And uh, you basically monitor the color of the flame that's exiting from the side of the torch. 
and when they go when it goes from yellow to blue just like the flame that's coming out of the torch you know you've burned off all the junk so now that i figured out you could apply the parking brake and achieve the same results as installing my person on the seat we're going to spin it over and see if we got a, got a spark here oh yeah we got a good blue spark appears to me we're not getting enough fuel so I guess we'll dig into the carburetor the answer is yes we're getting a lot of fuel to the carburetor why don't all lawnmowers have fuel shutoff valves I mean it what, what is it like a 20 cent part you just put it in line with the, it's a little plastic valve you put in line on the fuel line what I have found with the shutoff solenoid is an intense amount of corrosion on those connect on those uh, contacts I can't really get up in there to clean it so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off and uh, see if I can get that cleaned up maybe that's the problem there's also a bunch of gunk built up underneath the button and I don't know which way this thing strokes when it's activated or how long the stroke is it does move but I'm gonna go ahead and clean this clean the contacts and while it's easy to do so, I'm going to go ahead and pull the bowl off the carburetor just to be on the safe side. I just decided to go ahead and pull the carburetor. I figured why not? I'm in it this far. Plus, I got some inside baseball, and uh, I'll show you what we're dealing with here in just a second. Well, it's a good thing I decided to pull the carburetor. It was full of junk, and uh, the jet was stopped up. And But the, uh, the inside info I got on it, I spoke with my dad. He's the one that... Uh, serviced this thing two years ago for the family member that owned it and he put that carburetor on there he said when he ordered that carburetor they showed one that fit a variety of engines and uh, including this one but when it come in uh, he said the main jet was a little bit smaller than the one that was original to the mower and that explains the uh, fouled spark plug because i think they were running it slightly on choke in order for the machine to run smoothly now, I can uh, increase the size of that jet with a small torch tip cleaner, and that was my plan, just ever so slightly. However, um, when this carburetor was made, uh, the young ones over in the Orient in the factory, it must have been like the 15th hour of the shift because they didn't have the, uh, the gasket aligned properly, and so the bowl and this it looks kind of like a plastic valve body on a transmission it had it all mashed and and distorted and running across two different parts of the chamber and when i took it apart uh it, it's it's just very flimsy i don't think it's going to survive you know i about talked myself into believing i can salvage this decrepit gasket but if i lay it in there just right and with the carburetor in the vise, I can set the I can set this piece down directly on it without moving that gasket, then install the bowl to hold everything. I might just, you know, in the interest of time, I might be able to salvage this gasket. Uh, so every every orifice in this thing was stopped up. This is what I believe to be the massive main jet uh, for this beast of an engine and uh, it cleaned up um, I used the torch tip cleaner to just ever so slightly uh, ream that jet so maybe it'll run a little bit better uh, but yeah everything was stopped up and I took it a step further and broke a wire off in one of the ports you know I mean that's just uh, just going above and beyond but I, I did get the wire out so <laughs> I think we're okay so I'm going to try to reassemble this thing before I order a new carburetor and slap it on there and, you know, cross my fingers and see how it goes.
So that's, a, that's one task out of the way. And now we can start on the main challenge and that is fixing this deck. You know, I have battery impacts, but since we just got the shop air going in the last episode, or thereabouts, I think I'm going to use the old three bolt here, just because I haven't used it in a while. We've got a nice piece of barbed wire, or fence wire, wrapped around the spindle. Wonderful. Wonderful. Along with road grading, it appears they were doing some land mulching with this unit. Just judging by all the sticks and pine cones and everything else that's up in this thing. Uh, belt off the crankshaft pulley and cables disconnected, so really should be pretty straightforward to remove the deck. Just a couple, uh, one of these on each side and one in the front. Maybe I should get a floor jack under this thing so it doesn't crash. Two more pins to pull. All right, now let's assess the carnage. It would appear this is a spring-loaded arm that was connected by cable up to the lever on the steering column and I'm assuming you, you pull it so far and it must catch and engage the blades. I'm not exactly sure what holds it there but uh, it's quite obvious that this arm is bent so I'm thinking that should be a fairly easy repair so uh, I'm gonna get this thing out uh, outside where I can blow the, all this uh, debris off of it get a better look at it and see exactly what I'm gonna have to do to straighten that arm now that I got the uh, the rat's nest out of here I can see much better what's going on so uh, as I said, this, this uh, I don't know if that's a spindle or what, what have you, the pulley is bent on this arm, so that's gonna have to be straightened. Uh, to remove this, simply unhook that spring and remove that bolt. Now what these are, and this linkage that goes over to this one, these are brakes for the pulleys. That way when you disengage the, uh, I assume when you disengage the blade, it stops the blades from actually turning. Uh, so that's more or less a safety feature, I think, more than anything. However, this brake over here is stuck. There's a return spring right here. It should pivot that way to unlock. And that sucker is solid. And it's not the linkage. The linkage is loose. So that's probably just corroded. Uh, so I'm going to pull that bolt out and address that. bent in a couple of spots here. Uh, we have a slight bend here and then a heavy bend here. So 
I don't think it's just a matter of grabbing this in the vise with the pulley on it and just bending it back. I think it's just going to bend in a different spot. So the correct way to do it, I believe, would be to pull this pulley off and then straighten it with the vise is going to be my attempt. We'll see how it goes. So it's going to be about as straight as I can get it. It's got a little bit of wave to it. I don't really think there's any getting that out. That's pretty darn close. I'm going to call that good. So everything went together quite well. These old parts, boy, they were just crying out for lubrication. I answered that call with grease and three-in-one oil. Anyhow, your cable comes in here, attaches to this arm. You engage the blades by pulling that cable and the arm does this, and then when you want to shut the blades off, you release it, and your brakes contact your spindle pulleys. Uh, of course, the cable's not hooked up, so this is traveling too far, but once everything is hooked back under there and hooked back up, I think it's all gonna work pretty slick. I might have to make a slight adjustment on this brake over here, but I did get it freed up, as you can see. So uh, the belt is also in really good shape. I just expected it to be burnt up or flat spotted or something, but really I've went over this whole belt. There's no cracks. Uh, it doesn't really look all that old, so I'm just gonna roll with it. And uh, so we're pretty much ready to uh, slide this back in there and go back in with it. Um, as far as the blades go, made a quick trip over to Atwoods where I acquired a brand new set of blades. While I was there, I noticed that they had everything I needed for both a tune-up and service. So that includes engine oil, oil filter, fuel filter, air filter, spark plug, and they had a fuel shutoff valve. Every lawnmower needs one of these, and now mine will have it. Well, it's been a long day, but I think we're about ready to let it down and take it for a rip. So uh, the deck went on the same way it came off. I spared you all that nonsense. Um, the belt tightens up perfectly when the, when the blade lever is engaged. Um, didn't have to make any adjustments like I thought I was going to. So that, that's all really good news. Oh, I fixed this little mechanism here. This chute, there's some good old zip ties. Got that uh, where it needed to be. Let's see if I can hold everything here. Now we've got good new sharp blades. These are high lift blades and uh, they were only like $32 for the pair for 46 inch deck. I thought that was reasonable, you know. And uh, if I'm not forgetting anything, I think we're ready to let it down. I'm not gonna air the tires up till it's on the ground. That way I can adequately, this is my tire gauge right here. It's a Fry harness boot and I just use it until all the, until the rear tires feel the same and do the same on the front. That's been my tire gauge on lawnmowers for 40 years. So, all right, let's get this thing down and uh, see how it does. I can't take it anymore. I gotta wash it. Just give me a second.
Well, first test drive, I gotta say, it's cutting really good. It's working really good. It drives good. Uh, I've, I've never personally owned a lawnmower that cut this yard this close and uh, that clean. Of course, that's a testament to those new blades. I've probably also never owned a lawnmower that had new blades on it, so there's that. But this is just a mixture of uh, dead winter grass and spring grass. The bahia hadn't really started coming in real strong yet. But uh, this is this is great. Now I can focus on getting the yard cleaned up and organized instead of working on junky lawn equipment. Seems to have plenty of power. And because uh, I was in some really thick stuff. I mean, this grass hadn't been cut in a year and a half. Now to get the rest of this yard, I'll have to move boats and trucks and trailers and all kinds of stuff to get up everywhere I need to go. And then of course run the weed eater after I'm done mowing, but I'm not gonna make you stick around for that. So yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it's mission accomplished. One day of uh, inconvenience and uh, potentially save me two grand. Well, I think like $2,300 to be exact. And that's theoretical. We'll see how this thing pans out, but all indications are yeah, I think it's a strong unit. I think it's gonna work out. So anyway, thanks for hanging out. Hope your uh, spring mowing season started off just a little bit easier than mine did, but uh, y'all take care. I'll see you in the next one.